Hey class, this is a follow-up to the last video, how to use proportions to set up and solve a problem or a situation in real life. Um, so this is an example. A painting is actually 12 inches high in real life. The question is, how wide is it if this photograph is a model of that painting? So there's a couple ways that you could set up your proportion. I always would recommend writing out the words first. So I want to compare the photo height to the photo width. That ratio should be equal to the actual painting height, the actual height, to the actual width. And now you can just plug in the numbers that are provided to you in the problem. So my photo height, that's right here, one and a quarter or 1.25 inches. Photo width, four and three eighths. The actual height is 12 inches. The actual width, we don't know, so you just put an X. Now go ahead, pause the video. Do your cross products like we did yesterday, and then resume the video to see if you got the answer correct. When you do out your cross products, you should be able to set up this equation here and then simplify to get that the actual width of the painting is 42 inches. Okay, here's a word problem that you could also use proportions to set up and predict budgeting or estimating for for the next year what you would need okay in this example Milford High School is planning a dance based on the information from last year last year there were 80 students and it cost them two hundred dollars this year there's a hundred students so the question is how much money would they need to budget for this year okay so same thing as last problem I would set it up with words first so students last year to money last year and that ratio is going to have to be equal to students this year and the cost for this year and then you plug in your numbers so last year there was 80 students cost two hundred dollars this year there's a hundred students and we don't know how much it's going to cost okay go ahead pause the video do your cross products and then resume when you're ready to find out if you got it right okay if you did your cross products out correctly you should find that this year it's going to cost them two hundred and fifty dollars to put on this dance for a hundred students Okay, another thing that we talked about in this lesson was some special properties of proportions. The first one, the cross product property, we've been working with for a few days now. And all that says is if you have a proportion and you do the cross products, they will be equal to one another. Okay, the reciprocal property, that one you can kind of see will also work because of the cross product property. If I do my cross products in this proportion and I do my cross products with the reciprocals, the cross product will remain the same. So this property just says if you take a proportion and you flip-flop each ratio, that proportion will also be true. The third proportion is very similar. If you take B and C, if you take those numbers and swap places, your proportion will still be true because your cross products again will remain the same. The fourth property is a little bit special. If you add the second number of that ratio to the first number in each of them, and you do at your cross products, it will still be a true proportion. Okay? Finding geometric mean. Geometric mean is when you set up a proportion such that two of the cross products will be x, so x times x. Okay, the other two numbers are the numbers that you're trying to find the geometric mean of. 
So in this case, part A says find the geometric mean of 8 and 18. You're going to set up your proportion, 8 to x will be equivalent to the ratio x to 18. And then you do your cross product. So you will always get x squared. 8 times 18 is 144. Now, just like we did yesterday, and just like you do all the time with Pythagorean theorem, to get rid of an exponent, you have to do the root. So square root. But we said sometimes when you do the square root, your answer could be positive or it could be negative. So the way you represent that is with a plus or minus. Okay? See if you can try part B. Okay, for part B, you would set up your ratio almost identical to part A, but now you just use the numbers 4 and 12. And then go ahead and do your cross products. Don't forget, you should always end up with x squared when you're doing geometric mean. Okay, so once you get down to this point, x is equal to plus or minus 48, whenever you've got a radical that is not a perfect radical like 144, you simply simplify that radical by finding perfect square factors. So in this case, square root of 16 times square root of 3, because 16 times 3 equals 48. So x is equal to plus or minus 4 root 3. Done. See if you can try part C. This is a real life application. And then resume the video to see if you got your answer right. Okay. Now, since this is a real life example, even though you have to do the square root right here, wouldn't really make sense to have a negative length of a paper. So, you know, you have to use your discretion if it's a real life example and it does not make sense to have a negative answer then you would exclude that from your answer and you would not put the plus or minus. Okay? Now in this case you have a pretty large radical that you have to simplify but your final answer should be 30 root 98 which makes sense because that's around 297 millimeters which would be a reasonable number for these lengths. Okay, this problem is about a model of the Titanic. So it gives you some information about the measurements for the scale model, and it also tells you how long the actual Titanic was. The question is, how long was the actual Titanic? So you're going to have to read through, find your units, write out a verbal model, anything that you can do to help yourself make out a proportion so that you can figure out this problem. Okay, some other strategies that you could use, colors are great. You can go through and read, highlight all the things that go with the scale model, highlight the ones that go with the actual Titanic. Okay, and now, once you have your ver verbal model set up, it's pretty easy to go ahead and plug in your numbers and solve for that with. So after you plug in your numbers to that verbal model, if you did create that, and then you do your cross products, you should end up with 92.38 feet. Now, a couple people are asking, well, don't I need to change the feet into inches? If your problem is dealing in with all inches except for one measurement, then, yeah, you might want to do that. But in this case, we know that the width of the Titanic is probably best measured in feet, not inches. And since this measurement is given to us in feet, it's okay to compare feet to feet. Okay, this is a diagram that's given to you and also the proportion is provided to you. So you should be able to plug in the numbers and then figure out that missing side for BD. Okay, and the only thing you really had to do in this one was figure out the length of AC by subtracting 30 from 10 and then plug in 20 for AC. You should get that BD is equal to 8. I hope that this video helped you out. If you're still confused on how to set up a proportion and solve a word problem, then come see me. We can make an appointment.